My life began uh, on Auckland's North Shore and I always had a dream of becoming a TV reporter. Uh, I went through university, did a journalism degree, thinking one day if I could be on the six o'clock news, you know, that would just be it. Worked hard, got a job at TV3 as an online editor. Turned out that I was on the six o'clock news a couple of years later, it was amazing. The longer I was in it, uh, the more my passion for it started to wane and the more I had nagging questions of, is this what I'm supposed to be doing? And a few years into it, um, I was in touch with a friend who was in Northern Thailand rescuing children from the sex trade and I just thought, man, I have to go see what you do. So I arrived in, in Bangkok to visit my friend JD. On that day, he got a call saying, hey, we think there's a child in this particular bar. We need you to check it out. And because Destiny Rescue's principles are that you don't go into a brothel alone, uh, JD said to me, sorry, man, you're gonna have to come with. So my first night in Asia, I was sitting in a brothel with a 19-year-old sex worker. There were men doing ghastly things to women in this place and uh, teenage girls, they're uh, just on offer for men to do whatever they wanted to. And that just could not have been more different to anything I've ever seen in my life in New Zealand. And it just, it, it broke me. I went back to my hotel room that night and I just remember bawling my eyes out because I just couldn't handle what I'd experienced. This girl that I sat with was 19 years old and she wanted to be an agricultural scientist or something, but this was the only way she knew that she could actually afford to pay for her studies. And I remember flying north to Chiang Rai after that thinking, God, that is one, one teenage girl in an industry where, where millions of children are caught up in. God, how can you be okay with that happening? And then when we got to Chiang Rai in the north, I got to see kids that had been rescued, and I got to see kids, um, you know, girls playing the handy clappy games and doing each other's hair and laughing and playing and just being kids. And, and God reminded me that I care about those girls in the brothels and this is what I want for them. And I was just pondering, how can I live my normal life knowing what I know now? knowing what kids are going through around the world. How can I just keep doing my thing and knowing that Jesus' heart breaks for these kids. He, he absolutely abhors what is happening to these children. And I had a response to make and he, he just kept tugging at my heart and moving me in that direction and eventually I just quit my job and went. <laughs> My then girlfriend, now, now wife Gabrielle, she was uh, really supportive of me going. And so I went over to Thailand and I lived there for a year. And given my experience at TV3, I was the international media director uh, for the year. I think hindsight is 2020, and through all the ups and downs and uncertainty and adventures God's taken me on in my life, I just see absolutely everything has been leading up to to where I am now and then I believe where I am now is going to be leading on to whatever else is next, whatever that may be. There's just power in saying yes to God. Life, life is an adventure and he has taken me and taken Gabrielle on a wonderful, a wonderful ride and, and he says it's there for anyone, anyone who wants to dive into the depths of life and help others and live with significance and live with meaning. The adventure is, adventure is there for them. God just says, take my hand, believe in my son, and we'll do it together.